Remember give me your feedback in the comments section alright okay let's start part 9, President, President, Saji yelled, coughing from the large amount of dust and dirt in the area. I'm fine. Sona appeared in the dust, shaking her clothes to get the dirt off. The damage has been minimal, the C3 commented, before looking towards the center of the combat with great seriousness. Although, I couldn't say for sure how they or where the attack was unleashed. Sona adjusted her glasses with a concerned look. Most likely it was a critical hit. What do we do, Sona? Tsubaki appeared, being accompanied by the rest of the entourage. I'll call them out, Sona stated seriously. It's obvious that Kokobiel's power is on a completely different level than what we assumed. Sona narrowed her eyes. I knew the cadres shouldn't be a joke, they have that position for a reason. Sona. Sona blinked in great astonishment after hearing Rias's voice from the small red magic circle that appeared on her ear. Laughs. Sona asked, somewhat surprised that he didn't even have his voice a bit agitated. I know what you're thinking. A huge smile spread across Rias's face, fixing her gaze on Issei. The brunette had just killed Freed a second ago, still glaring at Kokobiel. I ask you to give us ten more minutes. Sona looked up at the sky, before letting out a huge sigh. I hope I don't regret this. Chapter 16. Until the last breath. Dragon vs. Kadri. Kokobiel's surprised look changed to a completely serious expression, although a small smile could be seen on his face. I guess now is where the interesting part begins, the Kadri stated quietly, signaling for his remaining Cerberus to attack. The Cerberus began to run towards its target with mind-blowing speed. Even so, Issei waited for him standing on Freed's body without making any movement. The middle head opened his mouth as wide as possible to eat him. When one of his teeth was about to touch Issei's head, the brown-haired man blinked and his expression became extremely serious. The beast crashed hard into Issei as if he were a bull, dragging Issei a couple of meters, stopping dead after a few seconds. Everyone widened their eyes to see that when the dust cleared, Issei was holding the Cerberus back thanks to the grip he had on one of his teeth with one hand. Ah, the brown-haired man didn't doubt it for a second, throwing the beast into the sky with one hand with all his might, demonstrating brutal strength. When the monster had finally reached its maximum altitude, Issei extended his palm towards the sky, only to have a small crimson orb appear in his hand. Dragon shot. A large crimson-colored energy was shot like lightning towards the Cerberus, causing its body to completely disappear due to the magnitude of the attack. Interesting. Kokobiel yelled with a big maniacal grin on his face, extending both his hands out in front. Let's see how he fares with two. He yelled again, spreading a huge purple magic circle from the ground, causing two Cerberi to come out, which didn't take a second to run towards Issei. Seeing this, Issei frowned and proceeded to materialize his helmet out of caution. Both Cerberi pounced on Issei to tear him to pieces, but the brown-haired created two magical barriers just a second before, causing the beasts to make a full impact and fall stunned to the ground. The brunette took advantage of this and broke through his barriers, running forward as he extended both arms to his sides. The chestnut opened his fists, denoting a small crimson orb in both hands. Dragon shot. Diedrag's voice again echoed through the place, releasing two huge blasts of power that completely eradicated the Cerberi. Galilei took a step back as Issei disappeared out of nowhere and reappeared in front of him, but it was too late to react. The brown-haired man gave him a strong punch that completely pierced his stomach. Galilei widened his eyes in horror and spat out a huge amount of blood, then flew away with a bang from the force of the attack. Kokobiel watched indifferently as Galilei's body rolled until he fell behind him. How much power? The Kadri thought seriously. Did you want to fight to the death that bad? Issei yelled, dematerializing his helmet. So, Issei jumped up and pointed at him with a firm hand, regardless of the fact that he was several meters away. Now don't run away like a coward. Dragon shot. The attack began to advance from the sky towards Kokobiel with promising speed but very easy for the cadre to dodge. Kokobiel watched as the magical attack slowly approached his figure, crossing his arms. Just as she was about to hit him, the fallen angel could be seen giving a side smile. The attack crashed hard against its target, causing a huge blizzard to be generated all over the place. The dragon shot exploded a second time with great energy, creating a huge crimson sphere that emitted pure magic. That, 
Issei blinked in great astonishment. The attack is supposed to have shattered the ground. It shouldn't have had that effect. He thought the chestnut with great seriousness, keeping a great distance in the air, to make sure he didn't have any unpleasant surprises. The shock wave from the dragon shot would spread out a bit more, creating another final mini explosion, causing the impact site to be covered in dirt and dust. It worked, Issei thought, staring at the impact zone. The brown-haired man was able to capture by a pure miracle how something was approaching his position, thanks to the fact that the dust and the earth made a strange movement. Issei crossed his arms in an X out of sheer instinct, just the second Kokobiel appeared in front of him, without a scratch. Issei managed to cover himself from the punch, and then tried to kick him that Kokobiel dodged without much trouble. Like that, a rain of punches and kicks began to unfold in the air. Both opponents blocked and countered, failing to land a hit on their opponent. The speed was such that their spectators could hardly follow them with their eyes. That amount of power is not enough. Diedrag exclaimed seriously. You need to increase your power. How do I do that? Issei exclaimed, finding it increasingly difficult to block Kokobiel's attacks, as he was slowly increasing his strength. I'm already using all my power. It's time, Rias said in a low voice, creating a magic circle, where a black energy with a crimson edge began to be created. Laughs. Akino asked in great surprise. You cannot use the power of destruction. Remember that your brother forbade it, due to how little control you have over it. Akino fixed her gaze on the fight, frowning. Besides, Issei will most likely get hurt too. That does not matter. Rias replied, opting for a completely indifferent look. The important thing is to stop it. Then we'll heal Hyodo with a phoenix tear. Akino gave a sigh, but decided not to say anything about it. Rias narrowed her eyes with great conviction, releasing a powerful attack that made a creepy sound when released. Hearing the sound, Kokobiel looked towards the direction of the attack. He quickly kicked Issei hard, making the brunette blink in shock at the cadre's excessive speed increase. After knocking Issei to the ground, Kokobiel turned around and received the Grimori's attack with a strong kick, deflecting it into the sky practically within a second. When he did, it could be seen that his shoe was completely destroyed, as were his fingers, which completely disappeared just by coming into contact with such condensed energy. That, Rias yelled in complete disbelief, then, visibly freaked out when Kokobiel appeared in front of her out of nowhere. Listen to me well, Grimori brat. She declared Kokobiel with an aura of death around her. The next time you intervene in my combat, I will kill you. He concluded her, making Rias tremble from the cold and gloomy look that the cadre gave her. Kokobiel quickly turned around, using his forearm to cover Issei's punch. After that, they both jumped back and started punching and kicking again, with the difference that now they were on the ground. Another very glaring difference is that Issei was no longer counterattacking, he was only defending himself. Shit, I can't go on much longer, Issei thought, gritting his teeth tightly as he noticed that his block was gradually being shattered by Kokobiel's force. To increase your power through augments, you have to use your emotions. Diedrag yelled in his mind. Keep in mind that your mind is like that of a dragon, so your emotions are ten times stronger. You have to find some negative thought that will help you expel your full potential. A negative feeling. Issei's mind filled with negative memories. The relationship with his parents. His little ability to enter society. Being known as the weakest Sekariote. He even thought of the most recent of all. The death of Irina, his childhood friend. With all that, it should have been more than enough. After all, her heart was covered in bad feelings right now. Because it does not work. Diedrag thought, gritting his teeth tightly. There is supposed to be an explosion of power with such negative energy. All of my previous wielders have always been driven by anger and hate. Ha ha ha. Kokobiel laughed loudly, not letting Issei rest for even a second. I had thought that a sacred gear human with the power of him just awakened would have been very boring. But I see he was completely wrong. A gloomy smile graced his face. Luckily, those stupid devils were watching you the whole time, and they ended up reviving you. Hearing this, Issei blinked in complete shock. How do you know? The chestnut felt how his skin began to slowly tingle from a great uncontrollable hatred. How do I know? The sadistic and hideous smile on Kokobiel's face grew even more. Who do you think ordered your death? He yelled sadistically, 
finally breaking through Issei's defense, creating a spear of light to pierce through his skull. In those moments, a total darkness adorned Issei's heart. Everything around her turned dark and inaudible. He closed his eyes, remembering Rainer's last words to him. My boss ordered me to kill you. Kokobiel rolled the spear over his hand, heading at high speed towards Issei's face. Boost. Kokobiel's eyes widened in disbelief as her spear of light was completely destroyed by Issei's hand. The chestnut dematerialized his helmet, fixing his gaze on Kokobiel with an irrepressible rage. From one second to the next, the fight took a 180-degree turn, courtesy of Issei who began to lash out with extremely strong punches. Kokobiel could only go back, while his arms remained in the shape of an X to cover the first five blunt blows from the chestnut that forced him to go back. Even so, his blocking was not enough in the face of such force. Kokobiel covered himself with a side kick that went straight for his cheek, forcing him to widen his eyes in astonishment as he felt the blow carry so much power that it completely overwhelmed him. That ended with him flying off due to the inertia of the kick, rolling backwards several meters on the floor. Kokobiel would look up even while on the floor, fixing his gaze on Issei's great attack with great surprise. In the chestnut's hand you could see a large red orb that covered his entire hand. The attack emanated a somewhat grating and threatening sound. Are you sure about this, mate? Diedrag asked, then slightly gritted his teeth. Just a raise, he thought. There should have been so many more. There is no other option left but to use plan B. Issei would point towards Kokobiel. I know it's very risky, but it's the only way to win. I agree, mate. Diedrag stated seriously. Take this. Issei yelled loudly, throwing off the attack. Dragon shot. The attack came off Issei's hand with abysmal power. The magnitude of the attack was so great that it shattered the ground where the chestnut tree was standing. The attack advanced towards its target, generating a huge line of destruction in its path that finished off everything it touched. It's much bigger and more powerful than the previous one, Kokobiel thought, seeing that the length of the attack was so great, that it was impossible for him to dodge it, taking into account that he still had to get up from the ground. Kokobiel buried both hands in the ground, creating a huge purple magic circle, where three Cerberi came out in front of him. The Kadri rose from the ground, watching as the three creatures were completely devoured by the attack, generating a cloud of blood and dust in front of him. When he thought the attack was finally over, Kokobiel's eyes widened at him, completely impressed. Another one, the Kadri exclaimed, watching as another dragon shot of the same strength as the previous one pierced the thick curtain of blood and dirt. Kokobiel didn't take a second to respond, putting both hands in front to create a barrier. The attack hit the barrier hard, generating a huge crater at Kokobiel's feet, along with the sound of a deafening bang as the two forces came into contact. The attack seemed to be very powerful, but it was visibly seen that the Kadri was not having much trouble holding it back. Just when Issei's attack was about to fade away, Kokobiel was surprised again when he could see how a shadow pounced above him. The Kadri looked up from him to the sky in complete astonishment, watching as Issei was a few feet in the air from him, having another very strong dragon shot ready. Kokobiel moved one of his hands towards where Issei was, causing a magic circle to materialize, summoning a Cerberus that swallowed Issei in one bite. When he thought the problem had been fixed, Kokobiel's eyes widened in shock. Dragon shot. The powerful attack passed through the head of the Cerberos without any problem, going straight towards Kokobiel, creating a huge shock wave from the explosion. Issei was thrown several meters away by the power of the attack, rolling on the ground without stopping for a few seconds, until finally he was lying on the ground. The brunette looked up, seeing how the attack was expanding like a sphere, and then it exploded with great force, causing everyone to be covered by the huge amount of dust and dirt that was shot. Issei slowly got to his feet, trying to look around in vain, since the dust did not allow it. Finally, the chestnut's armor would break into a thousand pieces, falling to his knees while he breathed heavily. You have expended a very large amount of magic in one go, mate. You will no longer be able to fight for today. Diedrag declared with great seriousness. What do you say, Diedrag? Issei commented with a weak smile on her face. I can still continue. Issei materialized his gauntlet, then yelled loudly as he felt his entire hand go into a strong and painful spasm, breaking the gauntlet in the process. Ah, that's what I meant. Diedrag clarified, 
with a clearly worried tone in his voice. You haven't suffered it until now, but having the arm of a dragon brings many consequences. Hype quote. Issei continued breathing heavily, trying to catch his breath, although instead of recovering, he felt more and more dizzy. Unfortunately, his problems did not end there. Issei blinked in shock when Kokobiel appeared out of nowhere, grabbing him tightly by the neck and burying him in the ground, generating a small crater. The fallen angel wasted no time, stomping on both of his arms, then plunged a spear of light into his stomach, immobilizing him completely. Issei couldn't help but vomit a large amount of blood, while he felt an excruciating pain hovering in his stomach and spreading throughout his entire body. Issei could only stare at Kokobiel helplessly, seeing that the previous attack had only given him a couple of scratches and weak burns all over his body. That hurt me, Sekariote. Kokobiel commented. From his tone of voice, he was clearly more of a compliment than a threat. It's been a lot of fun, but I see you can't entertain me anymore. He concluded, looking around to try to visualize something in the dust. Listen to me well, this will be your last chance. You can decide to join me, and I promise I'll kill all your companions before the dust settles. That way, you won't have to see them. A smile appeared on Issei's face, at the same time that he spat blood on his opponent's badly damaged foot. Fuck you. Quote dot 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 quote. Kokobiel watched the spit in silence, then closed his eyes deeply. I see. It's too bad. Kokobiel fixed her gaze on Issei's face, denoting an expression that indicated suffering. In that case, she suffers watching all your friends die in front of your eyes. He finished, turning around, walking slowly away to find her victims. Issei clenched his fists tightly, before taking a deep breath. I guess I have no other choice. Issei would look at his right hand, for then a feeling of despair began to bloom in his heart. Wait, how do I call her if I can't use what little magic I have left? The answer came immediately, as all the dust cleared seemingly out of nowhere making Kokobiel look in all directions in clear surprise. Issei blinked in surprise when a guy in white armor landed in front of him. The brunette tried to look up from him to look at the subject, but it was useless, since he was still rooted to the ground. I cannot believe it. Kokobiel declared with clear emotion in his words, turning around to look at the subject with a big bloody smile on his face. Of all the types, I expected anyone except the Albion bearer. Upon hearing that name, Issei couldn't help but widen his eyes in shock. The energy of the man in front of him began to enter his body, making a completely irrational fear begin to dominate his body. Without a doubt, that subject was his greatest rival, her greatest enemy. This made it so that fear could easily spread through his entire body, flooding him with that feeling. Deep precious blue eyes widened with great seriousness. Being so focused on the subject, Issei didn't notice that the seal in his hand appeared and began to glow a light blue color. Do you really want to do crazy things, Kokobiel? Asked the teenager who seemed to have a similar age to Issei due to his voice. The subject raised his hand, preparing a small magic circle of a faint light blue color, more similar to white. I guess the fun is far from over. Kokobiel commented, getting into attack position. The cadre blinked in complete surprise as the Hakuryuko deflected his attack towards the spear that was holding Issei captive, freeing him from his prison. The blonde. The man spoke, fixing his gaze on Asia, who was several meters away. Take him away. I don't want him to die before our match. Why yes. Asia quickly complied with the order, without even thinking of questioning the subject. Calm down, Issei. Asia put her hands on the brunette's abdomen. With great seriousness. I'll cure you. She commented with conviction. Thank you Asia. Issei commented with a somewhat weakened tone, but he was still fully conscious. That guy. Issei thought, fixing her gaze on the Hakuryuko. Is he coming to help us? It's amazing. Rias thought, watching Issei with great attention. After being pierced by a light attack, he may still be conscious. Thank you for saving me, Issei. Kiba would arrive with the others, noticing an improvement in his condition thanks to Asia. No problem, Kiba. She commented the chestnut with a smile. By the way, Issei, Akino called out with great intrigue, fixing her gaze on the brunette's hand. Why is your hand glowing? That, Issei looked at her hand, seeing how the celestial seal was glowing brightly. That, he yelled, making absolutely everyone look at him like he was an idiot. What happens? 
The Hakuryuko wondered. No idea. Kokobil shrugged. Anyway. Going about our business. He would add with a mischievous smile on his face. Apparently you don't want Azazel to give you a second chance, the Hakuryuko stated with a sigh, fully probing. I guess I'll have to drag you by force. Oh. Kokobil scoffed. Try it if you can. He concluded with a big smile, getting into attack stance. You obviously have no idea, the Hakuryuko sneered, getting into a defensive position. Kokobil quickly charged at him. How slow. The Hakuryuko thought gracefully, seeing how Kokobil was only a meter away. But just before the match began, Kokobil stopped short, looking up at the sky. The Hakuryuko imitated the action of the Kadri. What the fuck is that? Kokobil asked, seeing how a huge magic circle of a pure light blue color had risen above his heads. Whose is that magic circle? Sona asked, arriving at the combat zone along with his entourage. He could see how Saji carried the fainted Xenobia in his hands. Ella Yaviene. The demons watched Issei with bated breath, waiting for the answer. But there was no need for the chestnut to answer. A blurry celestial figure took off at an absurdly high speed from the magic circle, falling to the ground, creating a huge cloud of dust in the process. Rias and the others became alert, observing the place with great attention. A huge vigorous smile could be seen in the dust along with silky long light blue hair. Out of nowhere, Kokobil and the Hakuryuko flew out of the dust curtain, crashing heavily into the debris of the academy. Again, it could be seen how a celestial blur was running at full speed, towards where the Hakuryuko, who was recomposing himself. The figure took a huge leap, landing on top of the boy with a kick that created a huge shock wave around him, completely destroying the subject's armor and revealing his albine face, to be then forcibly buried again in the rubble. Ridiculous of the blow. Again, another dust curtain was created at the site, along with a small crater. What the hell? Rias shouted, trying to visualize the figure while he covered his face from the strong current of wind that had generated the previous attack. The dust finally began to clear, watching as the clearly figure of a woman began to slowly move towards them. This made everyone alert, while a cold sweat broke out all over her face. Finally a real fight. The figure would finally become visible, revealing Tiamat with a sweet smile on his face. It's great that you were able to hold your own against these two guys, Issei. She finished the dragon, pointing to the brunette with a smile so cute that it was impossible to imitate. They all stared at Issei with wide eyes, waiting for an explanation. Meanwhile, Issei, well, the brown-haired man couldn't help but blush and look away after seeing the enormous unexpected smile that the dragon gave him. End of chapter. End of arc chapter 17. Trapped under the ice, the destruction of the Kadri, and the great humiliation of the H-A-K-U-R-Y-U-U-K-O-U. -U -U. Finally a real fight. The figure would finally become visible, revealing Tiamat with a sweet smile on his face. It's great that you were able to hold your own against these two guys, Issei. She finished the dragon, pointing to the brunette with a smile so cute that it was impossible to imitate. They all stared at Issei with wide eyes, waiting for an explanation. Meanwhile, Issei, well, the brown-haired man couldn't help but blush and look away after seeing the enormous unexpected smile that the dragon gave him. Seeing Issei's reaction, Tiamat closed her eyes in great joy. I can finally move my hips a little after all this time. He exclaimed, doing a rather charming little dance with his waist. Wait. Rias began to slowly widen her eyes, to the point where they seemed to bulge out of her face. That hair color, that shape, it can't be. Hearing these words, Issei couldn't help but look at her with both eyebrows raised. She quickly realized that it wasn't just her that had this reaction, as the older companions of the Citri and the Grimori were also reacting in the same way. Do you know her yet? Issei asked her mistress, looking at her with great curiosity. Why are you with Issei? Rias pointed at the dragon, completely ignoring Issei's question. Hearing this, the dragon stopped her beautiful dance that she used as a stretch, to look at Rias in slight surprise at her question. Because he is my dragon of light. She answered the dragon, pointing at him with a beautiful smile. She then brought one of her hands to her chest, to emphasize her next words. Because he lit up my world. Tiamat gave a little jump, getting off the rubble, beginning to slowly approach them. I was completely out of spirits, until he 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 showed up. 
he explained with a melodious voice. Suddenly my life changed. All these feelings are a drug. And like such a seductive glow, it fills me with life. She would conclude, putting both hands on her chest with a big smile as she made a very tender gesture, indicating that she really felt very comfortable with Issei. Issei, Rias exclaimed with great indignation, thinking things that were not. That, Issei asked, raising an eyebrow at his mistress's outburst. So, everyone immediately looked at Tiamat after hearing a cheerful, yet dark tone. His gaze was shadowed, with a small smile. If you guys try something, Tiamat's smile disappeared completely before disappearing and reappearing next to Rias, causing the president to jump a bit. If you guys hurt him, she whispered in his ear, a tone clearly cold and unscrupulous. I will take care of exterminating all your miserable species. He concluded, spitting out a large amount of poison, it's his voice that even seemed to be visible. Rias widened her eyes in great fear at the dangerous threat of the dragon, making her body tremble a little. Anyway, Tiamat clapped her hands, breaking away from Rias with a cute smile on his face. You've done a good job, Issei. But leave the rest to me. She declared the dragoness, receiving a nod from the brunette. Tiamat spun around, fixing her gaze on her two victims. This has to be a joke. The albino wiped the blood from his lips, fixing his gaze on Tiamat. What is she doing with the Diedrag wielder? Specifically, she of all women. This is completely unreal. Kokabil declared as he spat out a large amount of blood angrily, holding his stomach from the heavy kick he received from the dragon. Many have tried, but no one compares to the best ice user you will find in the world. Be careful if you run into the Ice Queen, because she will make you disappear, the Kadri thought, reciting a prayer he had read long ago. Well, Tiamat began to slowly move towards them with a big smile on her face. Let's see what my dear student was up against. The albino materialized his armor instantly upon seeing him approach, while Kokobiel's entire posture visibly tensed. It was a rather curious reaction, considering that they were about 30 meters away. Issei. Tiamat is your familiar. Rias asked, unable to believe what he was looking at. Yeah, wait, I don't remember mentioning his name to you. The brown-haired man fixed his gaze on her mistress with great attention. So, did they know each other? Do you know who she is? Rias asked, looking at him with wide eyes. My best friend, and my teacher. Issei pointed to himself in confusion, unable to understand the question. Diedrag should have told you about the Dragon Kings, Sona commented, causing Issei to look at her in great surprise. Wait, are you telling me what? Issei fixed his gaze on Tiamat in great astonishment. There are two Dragon Kings alive. Sona fixed her gaze on Tiamat, seeing how slowly an icy atmosphere was forming around her with each step she took. One is a man, who is in hell. The other is a woman who has made few appearances in these last thousand years. The strongest dragon queen of the four, Tiamat. Sona looked at Issei in slight astonishment. But I still can't figure out how she intervened without you calling her. Issei rubbed at his hair with a smile. It's just that our connection isn't like a familiar's. Let's just say it's more special. Issei pointed at his hand, making the celestial seal shine brightly on his hand. She can feel everything I feel through this connection, and vice versa. She can also know where I am when she wants to know, so she can always come to my aid when I'm in danger. Issei rubbed his cheek innocently. The only weakness that she has, is that being a connection that is based on a seal, if they destroy the seal, they destroy the connection. Hearing this, Rias and Sona couldn't help but listen intently. From what Tiamat told me, the only way to break the seal is to cut off my arm. I see. Rias nodded with a hand on her chin. Without a doubt. It is something very interesting. Tiamat continued patiently advancing towards her enemies, summoning her sword as the ground began to freeze, along with a great and dense mist of ice that completely surrounded her. Some wanted to see that melted ice, but every step at their destination has frozen. Ice. That person freezes when he feels it approaching. I recite Rias, watching how the dragon froze everything in her path, even the air itself had no chance. Wait. If she's the strongest among the Dragon Kings, that means, Issei fixed his gaze on the dragon, completely shocked by all the information received. She just had a hard time taking it in. Tiamat, is the third most powerful entity in the world. Issei wondered,
feeling how Tiamat's aura began to make his body heavy from the great hostility and power it presented. Tiamat let her sword touch the ground, making a small cut in the ice as she continued forward. Well, his smile widened greatly from one second to the next. How fast! The albino gritted his teeth. His arms were crossed in an X shape, in a lame attempt to defend himself. The dragon smashed his armor again with the blunt part of her sword, creating a huge crater in the ground. Let's get started! Tiamat exclaimed with great joy, embedding more and more of the albino in the crater. Tiamat's posture quickly straightened, deflecting Kokobiel's spears with great ease. She quickly turned 360 degrees as if she were a princess, deflecting the albino's punch with great ease. She did a few more turns, causing her sword to impact the subject's armor, forcing him to defend himself. Finally, I jump a little and slam the blunt part of my sword into her helmet, completely destroying it. The subject's face moved in slow motion after the blow, seeing that the impact had moved all the fat from her face, even though she had not a shred of it. Kokobiel quickly got behind the Ice Queen's back, intending to slash her with her spear. Tiamat continued to spin around happily as he hummed, blocking Kokobiel's attack and destroying her spear in the process. The albino tried to take advantage of the situation and tried to attack him from behind again, but Tiamat moved to the side with a masterful step, making the albino almost fall to the ground. Following that, Tiamat twisted his body into a 90-degree angle, dodging another dangerous slash from the cadre, displaying his flexibility and impressive reflexes from him. She brought her sword behind his head in an absurdly fast movement, blocking a punch from the albino with much ease. The attack had been so strong that it generated a huge blizzard, along with a small crater on the ground. Tiamat harnessed the very momentum of the blow to use to her advantage, sending her flying from the blow, spinning in the air with great glamour, landing on her feet in grand style. Tiamat jumped quickly, dodging a kick from the albino. The subject could not even react, since he received a strong kick to the face that once again shattered his helmet, causing it to roll on the floor. I have you, Kokobiel yelled, driving his spear into Tiamat's lung. The fallen angel blinked in complete shock as he saw that Tiamat's sword had appeared in his path without his realizing it, blocking the attack with much ease. Thanks for coming over, Tiamat exclaimed turning around with a speed that didn't even give the cadre time to think about fleeing, receiving a strong kick to the stomach. The attack generated a small shock wave around Kokobiel, in addition to the fact that the dragon's foot had completely sunk into his abdomen. The cadre's eyes widened in horror, vomiting a huge amount of blood before flying away. I see why you've been in so much trouble. Tiamat would turn around, giving Issei a smile. After this, we'll focus on improving your magical reserves. The dragon commented, seeing that the energy of the gauntlet was slowly making itself present. You must be very careful with it. Listen to me well, Valley. The now recognized Valley's gauntlet spoke. He's an enemy we can't win. We have to retreat. What do you say, Albion? Valley asked, standing up as she wiped the blood from her face. I'm not going to withdraw from a fight. Especially if I'm still a long way from using my full power. She declared herself with some confidence in her words. Hearing this, a rather dangerous smile appeared on Tiamat's face. Apparently he had something planned. Hey Issei, could you take care of my sword for me? The dragon asked, throwing the sword towards the brunette's position. Woo! Issei yelled as the sword plunged into the ground next to him, as it had generated a sizable crater from its position. Is he going to fight without the sword? Kokobiel exclaimed, getting up from the ground as he glared at her. Are you telling me I'm not worth it? The dangerous smile once again appeared on Tiamat's face. Do you know something? Tiamat placed both hands on his hip. To make things easier, I won't be flying during the entire fight. Tiamat clashed hard with his fists. I hope you are ready for the second round. She declared, striking a marathon pose, then being thrown at enormous speed. Because I'm more than ready. Do not underestimate me. Kokobiel yelled with great rage, going to heaven. She is. Mine. Valley exclaimed, getting in front of Tiamat, trying to punch her. Thanks for. Tiamat placed his foot on top of Valley's arm, then stepped on his hoof with his other foot. Support. Tiamat jumped with overwhelming force, causing Valley to be embedded in the ground unable to even respond to such speed and force. Tiamat soared into the air with great skill, 
standing right in front of Kokobil, who had prepared a huge spear of light. Go dead. The Kadri screamed sadistically, throwing the giant spear from him. Tiamat grabbed the tip of the spear between her two fingers, so that it would then explode into a thousand pieces. You fell. She cried out the Kadri again, driving a spear into the side of his abdomen. As. Kokobil blinked in complete shock as the spear shattered upon contact with Tiamat's skin. Kokobil did not have time to react when Tiamat grabbed his neck with brutal force, causing the Kadri to spit out a huge amount of blood. E. Tiamat sang with a sweet voice, descending at enormous speed with Kokobil ahead. Below, a huge crater was generated on the spot, along with a strong blizzard and the sound of an explosion that forced everyone to cover their faces for a second. Oh. Tiamat let go of Kokobil's neck when she saw that his eyes were completely blank. I broke his windpipe. He died. He explained the dragon with an innocent voice that didn't match the coldness with which she said it. Issei was watching this in the same position as before, not realizing that all his companions had moved away from the area out of caution. Ah! Uh, Issei exclaimed in pain, seeing how his gauntlet was activated without his permission. This is the side effect I'm talking about Diedrake. I feel like my arm is being burned permanently. He thought the brunette, looking at the gauntlet with clear pain in his expression. Hum. Issei. Tiamat glanced at him quickly with a worried expression. You used too much energy all at once. Tiamat extended her hand to him with a warm smile. I need to treat you now, before the energy continues to consume you. Issei was about to go to her side, but stopped abruptly. Tiamat. Watch out. Valley could be seen in the air throwing a large number of magical balls towards Tiamat. All the balls hit the dragon from behind, generating a small curtain of dust that began to dissipate immediately. Hum. Tiamat hummed, looking over her shoulders with a smile. Can you still stand up? Tiamat turned around with a huge smile on his face. In that case, let's keep having fun for a while longer. He exclaimed, starting to run towards a nearby pillar. I'm sure he was hit, Valley thought gritting his teeth. If Ten didn't do anything to her, let's see if with triple the amount she will have the same result. She concluded herself, causing a huge number of magic circles to appear behind her. Tiamat continued to run at enormous speed, dodging all magical attacks just before they could hit her body. Valley watched in great surprise as Tiamat emerged from the explosions without a scratch. Finally, Four balls impacted in the same place, generating a large smoke screen due to the explosion. I got it. Valley clenched her fist tightly at the thought that she had hit him. Tiamat emerged from the smoke screen unscathed, leaping towards the pillar and then running horizontally as if she were Spider-Man himself. When I reached the top, I hit a huge jump that completely smashed the pillar, reaching above Valley in less than a second. The albino blinked in complete disbelief when he ran into her head on. She didn't even have time to react, she could only receive a strong blow from Tiamat's forearm to the neck, which completely shattered her helmet and made her spit out a small amount of blood. They both fell to the ground as if they were a missile, generating a huge rumble in the place, causing Issei to fall to the ground due to his current low stamina. Issei tried to stand up, but the gauntlet lit up red hot, making the brown-haired man clench his teeth from the huge sting, finally falling to the ground completely unconscious. That's bad. Tiamat got up from Valley who seemed to be unconscious, seeing Issei's state. If I don't heal her now, the energy will continue to consume her and she will be unconscious for several days, thought the dragon. The always smiling and cheerful expression had already changed to normal by what she was witnessing. When the dragon took a small step, she saw how a magic circle was present in the place, Sears X coming out of it. The supreme demon couldn't help but be stunned by the condition of the battlefield, but he was even more impressed when he saw Tiamat on the battlefield. The dragon fixed her gaze on the demon, and Sirzex immediately felt a murderous urge alerting every fiber of his body, no matter that he was several meters away. Probably she had reacted like this, since she was near Issei's unconscious body, although it is more than clear that it had only been a coincidence. A figure sprang up behind the dragon, intent on delivering a heavy blow to her face. Tiamat sensed the hostility immediately, turning to parry the attack with his hand, catching the punch with ease. That act made her hair fly with intensity, and a small crater appeared at her feet. Are you still conscious? Tiamat wondered, somewhat impressed that the albino was so persistent. 
Listen to me well. The fight is over. I was in a very good mood for being my first battle after so long. That's why I thought I'd let you live. Especially since you're Issei's greatest rival, someone who can help his progress exponentially just by its mere existence. Tiamat tilted her head slightly to the side, her eyes widening in an ominous manner. But I'm starting to regret it. Bali couldn't help but widen his eyes in complete surprise. What's with that change in attitude? She couldn't help but think. Listen to me well. I didn't do anything to the bearer of Diedrake. I only came on Azazel's orders to take Kokobiel for his crimes. So, you have nothing to do with his current state. Tiamat glared at him, causing the albino to feel something cold penetrating his face. Then he disappears. Kokobiel is already dead. I never run from a fight. He declared the albino with great pride in his words. I haven't even used my full power. All your power. Hemp. Tiamat scoffed. Suddenly, the armor in Valley's fist was completely shattered by Tiamat's grab, causing the albino to start screaming in pain. If we both used our full power, what do you think the result would be? Tiamat continued to squeeze, causing Valley to drop to his knees as he heard the bones in his hand begin to crack. A crater began to be created at their feet that was getting bigger and bigger, only by the force of Tiamat. The dragon released him out of nowhere, causing the albino to look at her kneeling on the ground, being humiliated by the grandiose smile that Tiamat gave off for looking at him from above. I'm sorry brat, you can't even reach the soul. Valley could only lower his gaze and grit his teeth tightly at such a statement. Those words from Tiamat only made him feel even more humiliated than he already was, if that was even possible. Tiamat again fixed her gaze on Sirzex, causing the supreme demon to take a step back out of sheer instinct. Tiamat suddenly appeared in front of Issei's body, taking him in her arms with great delicacy and affection. Don't worry. The dragon whispered with a very tender tone. I'll take care of you. Brother. Rias yelled returning to the battlefield with everyone else, seeing that the white-haired guy had disappeared from the scene along with Kokobiel's corpse. Laughs. Sirzex exclaimed seriously. Everyone is fine. Yeah. Rias declared with a smile. Asia watched as Issei was being carried by Tiamat, so she began to get closer. Let me heal. Don't come near it. Don't touch it. Tiamat ordered with a rather cold tone, taking a couple of steps back. Asia quickly took several steps back when she felt that her life was in danger. What happened to her cute attitude? She thought the blonde, while a big cold sweat ran down her face because of the pressure that the dragon was exerting. Hey, I think we can talk about this more calmly. You know, talk in a better way. Sirzex made the point of him with a clearly nervous smile on his face at the situation. Not in a thousand years was this expected. If you want, I'll freeze you, I'll notice you better that way. Tiamat's threat made Sirzex himself take a step back in fear. What is this? Sirzex thought, watching as an icy aura surrounded Tiamat that stirred up an impressive pressure and hostility around her. Why do I feel like we're all going to die if someone steps forward? He wondered again, seeing how a kind of imaginary aura defined a large circle that represented instant freezing if someone entered it. Tiamat sat in the huge circle of ice that was created around her, delicately resting Issei's head on her thighs as she took his affected arm gently, then proceeded to freeze the gauntlet completely. His hand remained in contact with the gauntlet as red particles sprayed out of it. The dragon used her free hand to caress the brunette's cheek with great affection, while she waited for her to wake up. When doing this warm action, she can't help but smile a little. Only Issei could get her smiles. Line jump. Hum. A perfect pillow. Issei muttered in his sleep with a very satisfied smile on his face. Unconsciously, he moved his hands under the pillow to make himself even more comfortable. Amazing. It feels even better from below. Issei moved his hands under him, causing his laughing expression to turn into a small grimace. Hum. It's too hot for a pillow. Issei tried to adjust his face better, colliding head on with something. Hey. Issei opened his eyes, seeing that his nose was attached to someone's abdomen. That means. Issei slowly raised his gaze innocently, seeing how Tiamat's slightly flushed face peeked out from above his two great attributes. Oh. Issei practically jerked away from Tiamat with a great start, a little embarrassed for touching the dragon's bottom so much without her consent. Tiamat looked at him in slight surprise after his reaction, making Issei more nervous. 
It's not my fault you're so fluffy and warm. He tried to defend himself by making strange gestures with his hands, muddying the situation even more. Tiamat's surprise turned into a huge amazed smile, so that she then hugged him very tightly, putting the chestnut's face above her breasts with great joy. I'm so glad you're already so energetic. Issei could only roll his eyes after such an action by the dragon. Apparently, he only changes his way of being when he's with Issei. Sirzex commented with a hand on his chin, before looking at his sister. You said that they were best friends and that she was her master. Does that mean there is no other relationship? Not that I'm aware of. Issei made that pretty clear to me. Rias replied, remembering Issei's different reactions and his responses. Still, of all the possibilities, Sirzex thought with wide eyes. The enmity of Tiamat and the Diedrate wielders was amazing. Why has it changed so drastically now? Sirzex lowered his head, narrowing his eyes. It's obvious that the option of killing her is completely out of the question. The good thing is that the two of them don't seem to have any kind of romantic relationship. They just love each other very much. By the way, Mao, Sona tilted her head slightly, making the aforementioned pay special attention to her. How did you find out about the situation? I'm sure none of my royalty or Rias has called you. Hearing this, everyone couldn't help but stare at Sona in amazement. Are you kidding? Sirzex raised an eyebrow at such a stupid question. The main building of the academy exploded into a thousand pieces a few minutes ago. It wasn't going to take me that long to realize it. The main building exploded into a thousand pieces. Rias exclaimed in complete shock. It must have been that tremor before we entered the dimension. Kiba gave his hypothesis with great seriousness, being completely correct. Seeing that the bearer of Albion has already woken up, Tiamat hummed with a cute smile, while she caressed Issei's head that was still resting on her body. Out of nowhere, her beautiful smile changed to a rather dark smile. We will have to increase the intensity of the training a lot. Hearing this, Issei's entire body had a huge chill that didn't feel pleasant at all. Her face turned purple as she imagined an even more intense workout than she was already doing now. Are you okay? Tiamat blinked with great innocence after seeing Issei's reaction. Perfectly, she exclaimed the brunette, breaking away from Tiamat with a big toothy grin as a rather unreal glow surrounded her body, causing the dragoness to shake her head in amusement. Issei's energy didn't last long, as a strong dizziness overcame him completely, causing his face to fall into Tiamat's chest again. Now that the adrenaline rush of your first real combat is over, I guess you're feeling all the side effects in full. Tiamat commented, carrying him in his arms with great care as he rose from the ground. Even with me by your side, you'll need a day to recover. Having a dragon's arm is no joke, you know. Tiamat explained with great concern in his gaze. I feel very tired. Issei began to close his eyes slowly, resting his head on Tiamat's breasts to use them as a pillow. I just want to sleep, he continued. His somewhat dull eyes widened a bit after looking in one direction, though it didn't take long for them to close. I see, Tiamat thought, looking towards the direction where Issei was looking. I imagined that the first time something like this could happen, he concluded, fixing his gaze on Irina's corpse. Tiamat fixed his gaze on the demons with great seriousness. He took Issei to his house. Don't come bothering him for at least two days. He declared the dragon with a tone that clearly indicated that she was not in for a joke. Wait. He yelled Sirzex before Tiamat disappeared, causing the dragon to look sideways at him. I have an offer for you. I'm not interested in vermin deals. He declared the dragon with great seriousness, making Sirzex break out in a sweat. Do you want to be around Issei for longer? A small smile appeared on Sirzex's face as he saw that he had Tiamat's full attention. What are you planning? Brother. Rias thought, looking at the supreme demon with great intrigue. End of chapter. Start of arc chapter 18. The leader of the fallen. A loud slap was heard in Mal Lucifer's office, along with a fall. That's what you deserve. Sirzex looked at his sister lying on the ground with a certain coldness. Do you know all the trouble you could have caused, just for a shot at the rating games? She laughed alone under her commanding gaze, rubbing her bruised cheek. And as if that weren't enough, you put to death a cadre who could have been on our side, if we told him all of our plans. The chance of having such a large spy and backing within the fallen angels was ruined by your irresponsibility and opportunism. 
he commented to her, not taking the cold look from her face. Luckily, I had already planned in advance to make an armistice with the fallen. An armistice? Rias wondered, looking up in astonishment after hearing his words. That's how it is. Sirzex finally abandoned his ghoulish gaze, looking out the window. The problem is that it's impossible for me to know how Azazel thinks. Only time will tell if she's on our side or not. Wait, how did you convince Azazel to come to hell? To be more specific, he won't come just to visit hell. Sirzex looked at Rias's gaze, seeing that he was looking for an explanation. You'll find out when the time comes. I'm not going to tell you, maybe that way you'll think better about your future actions. Sirzex headed for the door, glancing sideways at his sister. Regarding your little work, apparently, we'll continue as planned. Tiamat doesn't seem to be lovingly interested in Issei. Sirzex opened the door, looking up with a small smile. Even so, I never expected that we would have the possibility of having Tiamat in our ranks. It's obvious that she wants nothing to do with us, but if we manage to fully control Issei, she will be on our side as well. Sirzex fixed his gaze on Rias seriously. Just be careful and not do anything stupid. If we are forced to make a drastic move, we must make sure we cover all the evidence so we don't have to deal with Tiamat. Sirzex turned his back on his sister, giving a small nod. Sigh. At the very least, not having to deal with her until the end. After all, it doesn't matter if you are a human or a dragon king. We will all end up with the same fate, he concluded, closing the door with great calm. It doesn't matter if you are a human or a dragon king. We will all end up with the same fate, he concluded, closing the door with great calm. It doesn't matter if you are a human or a dragon king. We will all end up with the same fate, he concluded, closing the door with great calm. Rias just stared at the door for several seconds his hand still on the cheek that was turning redder and redder. The silence was finally broken, when Rias heavily hit the ground with her fist. Why doesn't anything go my way? Rias yelled with great anger. She knew that she had achieved her goal of attracting attention by defeating a cadre, but she never expected that she would be so humiliated by her older brother. Line jump. The sunbeams were beginning to peek over the city of Kuo. In this new day, everything seemed to be perfect with the exception of the destroyed academy that had already become national news. Apart from that, everything said that it was going to be a very nice day today, a completely calm day with no homework. That was a very good thing, since a certain person needed a full day to recover from such a battle he had had. Now we look at that person's house, specifically. Let's start another day with great energy. The alarm clock started ringing loudly in a rather adorable voice. Come on, get up. If you don't get up, I'll get into your bed. Issei's hand cut the alarm clock with an amazing lack of energy. How did I get here? Issei rubbed his eyes deeply, trying to shake off the sleep without success. Oh my god! The brunette exclaimed, giving a big yawn. Never in my life have I felt so tired. He told himself, not even moving an inch from his bed. A small grimace appeared on Issei's face when he felt a small prick in his abdomen just as he felt extremely heavy bandages surrounding his entire torso. Even with Asia's healing factors, they couldn't heal all the damage from that spear that went through me, the brown-haired man thought, slowly lifting the sheets to take a closer look at his current condition. He was quite surprised when he discovered that the bandages were not extremely heavy, since something else was exerting great pressure against his body. And that long and precious unmistakable light blue hair that was scattered all over the bed was the proof that Issei needed to find out who it was. Tiamat. Issei wondered aloud, watching the dragon sleep peacefully on her chest. Her bodies seemed to be more intertwined than met the eye. Hum. Tiamat slowly opened her eyes, raising her gaze a little after hearing the voice of her future lover. Good morning, Issei. She greeted the dragon, straddling the chestnut's waist. Although the sheets still covered his body and made the view of his body look a bit obscured, Issei was able to easily capture a detail that made him a little nervous. Is she in her underwear? He thought about the brunette, seeing that the two attributes of Tiamat were covered by a white bodice that left a great neckline due to the size of her breasts. I'm in my underwear. Issei looked at himself, seeing that he only had a boxer at the moment, if we don't count the bandages that covered his entire torso. Are you okay? Tiamat tilted her head slightly after seeing that Issei remained completely static. Yeah, 
It's just that you surprised me. She answered quickly. Apparently, the fact that they were both in their underwear in the same bed only affected him for a second. Issei. A female voice was heard through the door, causing the brunette to quickly grab Tiamat by the abdomen. Issei made a sudden movement to instantly hide the dragon, drawing a sweet little moan out of her. Yes mom. Issei asked, hugging Tiamat from behind so she wouldn't come out. The dragon blinked in slight astonishment at Issei's reaction. Seeing that her hands could easily reach the sides of Issei's abdomen, a daring smile spread on her face. Yesterday there was a big incident in your academy. You won't have classes for today, declared her mother from the other side of the door. I just wanted to tell you not to do anything stupid while we're gone, because today we'll be back very late with your father. Did you hear? Why yes. A loud cry came out of Issei's mouth as he felt a strange stimulus in her body, which also moved in a strange way due to the shock received. Hearing her son's somewhat startled voice, Mrs. Hyodo raised an eyebrow. Hey, are you okay? Yes, I'm perfect perfectly. The same thing happened again, although this time it was even more abrupt than before. Mrs. Hyodo raised her eyebrow even higher, but finally bowed her shoulders, starting down the stairs. Hearing the footsteps recede, Issei quickly pulled back the covers and gave Tiamat a glare. What did you just do to me? A playful smile shot across Tiamat's face at the question. Do you really want to know? Hmm, yes. Issei looked doubtful. Tiamat grabbed the sides of his abdomen in one quick movement, then squeezed a little. Ah, Issei yelled, feeling how the tickles ran through her body. Damned, she exclaimed with a big challenging smile on her face. Oh no. Wait, Tiamat exclaimed between laughs when she saw that Issei began to play along, tickling different parts of her body. They began to toss and turn on the bed, rolling over each other and causing the sheets to fly through the air. Finally, the first round ended with Tiamat's victory, when she managed to sit astride Issei's waist. The position was somewhat strange, since Issei had ended up sitting on the bed against the wall, causing Tiamat's breasts to sink a bit into his face. I have you, she declared the dragon with a triumphant smile on her face. It's okay, you win, Issei declared quickly, raising her face a little to look at the dragon. Could you move away a bit? I'm having a hard time breathing, she begged herself, a small blush on her face. A foxy smile decorated Tiamat's face. Ot, Issei widened his eyes beyond power after what he heard. Oh no, the smile on Tiamat's face grew even wider. No please. Finally, Issei breathed a huge sigh of relief as Tiamat pulled his body back a bit, letting him breathe comfortably. You fell. Tiamat shouted with great joy, burying Issei's face completely between her breasts. Gum. Issei tried to yell at him, but all of his screams were completely muffled by the two giant mounds. Her face turned purple quickly, so she began to move her face frantically in search of a breath of air. Hum hum hum. Tiamat laughed, resting a hand on Issei's hair. You tickle me. Issei grabbed the dragon's waist in a quick movement, making Tiamat blink in surprise and give a slight moan, at the same time that the situation turned against her. The brunette made a quick move, throwing Tiamat onto the bed and lying on top of her, winning the second round. Issei might be taunting Tiamat right now, but the posture they ended up with just didn't allow it. Tiamat's legs hugged Issei's hip tightly, making their most intimate parts come into strong contact despite the underwear. Issei's hands ended up on the back of the dragon, while Tiamat's hands ended up surrounding Issei's neck in a tender hug, which caused her nose to collide strongly and her lips to be in constant contact with these moments. Anyone in this situation would quickly separate from the other and they would not know how to look at each other's faces. But they seemed to be very focused on her lips and her eyes right now. Their lips continued to brush, neither of them making any move to separate for a few seconds. Not even they themselves knew what they were thinking at this moment, they just let themselves be carried away by the situation. I forgot to tell you. Issei's mother's voice sounded loudly at the exit, completely breaking the moment, since Issei raised her face a little after hearing it. An exchange teacher who will teach at your academy will come to live here tomorrow. I only ask you to behave yourself and not bother her, or you will be punished. A teacher, Issei thought, raising her face a little more. Okay. She quickly answered the chestnut, and then heard the click of the door. A mischievous smile appeared on Tiamat's face. My opportunity. The dragon screamed. 
Wuwa. Issei yelled as he was thrown on the bed, flipping both of their positions once more. Finally, Tiamat took the victory, finishing on top of Issei with a score in favor of 2 to 1. You like to win, right? Issei asked, giving her a half smile. I love it. She declared the dragon with great conviction. It was fun. Issei started stroking Tiamat's hair. But you already exhausted the little energy I had. Tiamat separated a bit from Issei to take a taste and cover herself again. Take advantage of this whole day to rest. Tomorrow will be a hectic day. A small flashback of Irina's death returned to her mind, causing her expression to twist to a much more serious one. I know. Tiamat already knew him very well, so she caught his change. In attitude immediately, she acted quickly, hugging him with great force and positioning her face on the brown chest. Tomorrow you will have time to think about it. Now, concentrate on recovering. She commented very calmly, making Issei's gaze visibly soften. You're right. Issei placed a hand on Tiamat's cheek, causing a cute smile to appear on her face, at the same time that she reaffirmed her embrace with great affection. The brown-haired man only observed this with slightly widened eyes, remembering one of his wishes before he became a demon. No. Hum. Tiamat looked up from him, surprised by the warm smile that graced the face of his future lover. I always wanted to sleep with a lot of naked women in the same bed to feel complete. Even so, every time I imagined it, I felt that no matter how many naked women surrounded me, I always felt that something was missing in that desire. I felt empty. Issei fixed her gaze on Tiamat's eyes, making the dragon feel the great gratitude that her eyes gave off without the need to intermediate words. But now, I'm with only one woman in bed. It's ironic. Issei chuckled at the end. Tiamat looked at him with great curiosity for his last word. Why is it ironic? Because I'm only with one woman. Tiamat felt Issei's arm encircle her waist, causing her to have a little shiver all over her body. Only with one. Issei brought her other hand to her heart. And I feel fuller than ever. Tiamat couldn't help but tightly squeeze the sheets with her hands after Issei's words. Issei's words had made his entire chest burn with endless emotions. Even so, that enormous warmth of hers didn't burn her, it just held her as if she were a baby in her mother's hands. That burning sensation spread throughout her body, until she finally reached her face, and she presented herself in the form of a huge blush. Simply. She was completely moved by just his last seven words. Simply, she had felt how her whole heart had stirred with great joy with just his last seven words. For that, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for making me feel so happy. She declared Issei with a toothy smile on her face, unaware that her words were digging deep into Tiamat's heart. Issei couldn't help but blink in confusion when he felt how Tiamat's hands moved over his torso with a rather strange shyness on the part of the dragon. Finally, Tiamat slowly enclosed Issei in a big hug, looking down at her so that she couldn't see how her eyes shone with great love. Quote dot dot dot. You can't imagine how happy you make me feel. Tiamat's voice was heard almost like a whisper, but the great tenderness that she expressed in her words was felt with great intensity. Oh really? Issei couldn't help but smile after hearing the dragon's words from him. A big yawn followed his words, indicating that she already wanted to rest. In any case, not even a thousand yawns could break what Tiamat was feeling right now. We'd better sleep, Issei declared with a bit of seriousness, adjusting her embrace on the waist of her dragon. Take a rest, Issei closed his eyes, before being able to avoid smiling when he felt how Tiamat's embrace strengthened even more, at the same time that he rubbed his face quite tenderly on Issei's chest. She slowly began to close her eyes. May you rest? Tiamat's loving and affectionate voice came out with a big loving smile on her face when she heard Issei's heartbeat. Line jump. Wake up. Wake up. The voice with a dead tone came through the alarm clock. If you don't, I'll kill you. Issei quickly turned off the alarm clock, and then raised his face from the pillow with clearly renewed energy. Now I feel much better, the brown-haired man said to himself, outlining a silly smile on his face. Issei didn't take long to. Notice the dragon's absence from him, causing him to raise an eyebrow. It was a dream. He couldn't help but think. Since yesterday he was too tired. No, it can't be a dream. Those memories are too lucid. He told himself the chestnut, unable to help but smile after remembering how Tiamat acted. 
Issei didn't take long to remove the bandages from his torso, seeing that he was already perfectly healed. He quickly changed into his uniform, prepared to leave for Kuo Academy. My mother had said that there was an incident, the brown-haired man thought, carrying his suitcase. What happened? Did what happened two days ago have something to do with it? Issei couldn't help wondering with great seriousness, opening the door to her room. The brown-haired man couldn't help but blink in surprise, seeing that Tiamat was coming out of the front room wearing a black suit and a white shirt. His clothing seemed to be more male than female. But even so, he looked very good. Seeing that Issei finally woke up, the dragon fixed her gaze on him and slowly approached. The brown-haired man couldn't help but blush slightly when Tiamat intertwined her hand with Issei's, without taking away that distinctive seriousness on her face that only made her look prettier. How I look? The dragon asked, fixing her eyes on Issei's, indicating that the answer was very important. You look great. The words came out of Issei's mouth without her consent, making the brunette blush a little more. Thank you. A small smile spread across Tiamat's face as she took a step back to separate. Wait, why are you wearing a suit? The chestnut asked with great curiosity. I have decided to link myself more to the human world. She answered picking up a white briefcase that was propped up by the door. That way, the two of us will spend more time together. She finished, giving the chestnut a cute smile. Issei couldn't help but be surprised at such a statement. He really made him very happy that they both felt so comfortable with each other. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to start my work. She declared the dragon, giving her a small pat on the head before walking off down the stairs. Since when does that room have clothes? Issei crossed his arms and raised an eyebrow as she looked around the closed room, until she finally bowed her shoulders. Well, it doesn't matter. Line jump. The silence in the cemetery was absolute, despite being surrounded by the forest of Kuo. Not a soul was in the place, with the exception of a young woman with blue hair who was looking intently at a grave without taking her eyes off it. The name of the person, who was now resting in peace, was engraved on the grave. Irina Shido. Zenobia placed a hand on the grave, crouching down a bit. Her face remained strong at all times, but her eyes could not hide what she was feeling right now. The woman didn't flinch when Issei stood next to her, fixing his gaze on the grave of his childhood friend with the same expression as Zenobia. They both remained silent for several seconds, not sharing even a glance. Finally a large breeze passed by, causing Zenobia to stand up again. I'm sorry it ended this way, Issei apologized, clenching his fists tightly. If I hadn't been so incredulous, she. Now I finish understanding why Irina was so attached to you in the past. Zenobia interrupted him, causing the brunette to fix her gaze on the exorcist. Diedrag Wielder. No, Hyodo Issei. Zenobia placed a hand on her shoulder, giving her a small smile. You're a very good person, and that didn't change even though you've become a devil. I also would have liked it to end differently, but if it had, you might never have understood how you should act. Seeing your eyes, I realize that now you understand that not. All people deserve to have a second chance. I only hope that you continue to fight for what you believe is right, and never doubt it again. Issei could only observe her completely impressed by her words, until finally a somewhat sad smile appeared on his face, at the same time that he took the hand of the woman who was on his shoulder, to shake it strongly with his. Thank you so much. Zenobia just smiled at her thanks. As an expression of gratitude, I would like you to take me to speak with your master, Rias Gramori. Zenobia declared, returning to her natural serious countenance. I have to talk to her about the big lie I've lived with all these years. Issei's expression instantly became serious when he realized he was talking about God. Just now she had classes. If you want, I can take you to Kuo Academy to talk to her. Zenobia just nodded, showing her gratitude. Line jump. Hey, some say it was a terrorist attack, do you think that's true? I don't think so. Most likely some rebellious student did it after watching a movie. Are you listening? Most likely they just left the gas on and everything fell apart. If it had been as you say, it wouldn't have been reduced to just rubble. Issei heard the rumors of his classmates who were heading to the academy. What are you talking about? Issei whispered in her ear causing Zenobia to look at him with both eyebrows raised. Didn't you find out what happened? Issei just looked at her with even more curiosity, 
which was quickly dissipated when he felt a somewhat dense energy that made his skin crawl. Issei quickly fixed his gaze on the other side of the bridge, seeing how a fairly well-known guy with white hair was leaning on the entrance gate with his hands in his pockets. The brown-haired man couldn't help but sweat when Valley began to slowly approach his position. Finally, Valley positioned himself in front of Issei, fixing his gaze on him in a penetrating way. Finally we can see each other, Hyodo Issei. Valley would narrow his eyes with a menacing aura. Or should I say, rival. The cold sweat on Issei's face only intensified after hearing the last words. Are you seriously planning to fight your battle now, White Dragon Emperor? Xenobia stepped in, making Valley close his eyes with a smile. I just came by to say hello. The albino turned his face back, drawing a totally serious expression. After all, it would be crazy to try anything with her near her. Under her eyes, a huge aura as pure as ice could be seen emanating from the academy. Issei couldn't help but blink in confusion. She, Valley looked at him with slight surprise. That's right, you've barely awakened your power. It will take quite a while for you to integrate the scent and aura of a dragon. Issei had a small flashback to when he felt a powerful aura in the familiar realm, which ended up being Tiamat. Is that what you mean? That's right, I haven't redeveloped it in a long time. Anyway, I just wanted to say hello, and tell you that I'm really looking forward to our fight. She declared, turning around, to fix her gaze on Issei one last time. I hope you don't disappoint me. Issei could only stare at him seriously, then swallow hard when he finally left. I'll have to make a lot of effort, the brown-haired man thought seriously, looking up at the sky. At that precise moment, he realized that something very strange was happening. Wait, isn't there something missing to obstruct the view? The huge building of the Kuo Academy began to flash in his mind, indicating that this was what was missing. Holy crap, he yelled wide-eyed, running quickly to see that there was indeed a huge crater filled with debris where the main building once stood. We were going to wipe everyone's memory and fix the academy. In one day so this would go unnoticed, Rias joined Issei, giving him a small smile. But apparently, my brother has other plans. Don't ask me what they are though, since he didn't tell me anything about it. I see, and we still have classes. A bored look adorned the chestnut's face. Apparently it's the last class, before summer vacation starts. Rias commented with a smile. Summer vacation. Issei wondered out loud, didn't they start in three months? Yes, but they went ahead. We will have a month and a half of vacation, until they manage to rebuild the building. Yavio, sorry for asking, but why are you here? Rias fixed his gaze on Xenobia with some seriousness. The problems have already been solved, so you have nothing to do in this place. I had to talk to you about something very important. Xenobia replied, making Rias stare at her for a few seconds. Let's go to my club. She declared the redhead, nodding her head for Xenobia to follow her. But, before, Rias took out a pamphlet from his pocket, handing it to Issei. He's from your favorite customer. The old. Issei wondered aloud, looking at the pamphlet carefully. Issei stood at the entrance, watching as numerous chairs were divided into groups in the courtyard. Most likely they indicated different groups of students. The brown haired looked towards the side of the gate, seeing that there was a small announcement that indicated today's classes. Great. The brunette thought with boredom. Three hours of acting for what happened, and then we have two hours of chemistry. Line jump. Issei's group was in the group that corresponded to them, taking a seat on the different benches, somewhat unstable due to the terrain. Fuck. That act was real hell. Matsuda complained with great intensity. That's right. Motohama adjusted his glasses seriously. Even so. I can't stop thinking about what happened. It's amazing that you have one thing on your head other than a pair of breasts, Motohama. A brown-haired woman smirked at her as she crossed her arms. Ika Kuryu. Motohama crossed his arms with a disgusted look on his face. It's normal that I don't focus too much on women, if in front of me I only have a board with some visual defects. Motohama adjusted her glasses with a smirk, returning the insult. Hmm. Does that mean they consider themselves great men? Aika adjusted her glasses, looking at Matsuda and Motohama's pants. They both covered her crotch as they felt naked before the woman's gaze. Wow. Aika blinked in slight surprise. I didn't expect the perv duo to be 20 centimeters in length, with a 4 centimeter girth. 
I must say I'm impressed. Hey, he's using your technique against us. Matsuda yelled at Motohama with a huge blush on her face. So this is how women feel when I look at them in detail. Motohama adjusted her glasses with a small blush. I think I'm beginning to understand why they always beat me. And the friend of the perv duo, Issei was caught off guard hearing that comment. Hmm, you could really use your best friends sharing an inch with you. Don't go around spreading those things like it's nothing. Issei pointed at her, as she covered her crotch with her other hand. Aika adjusted her glasses, studying her entire body in detail. Still, that's not your real forte. Hearing this, the three men couldn't help but look at her curiously. Even though he wears such loose clothing, I can easily see that you have a better physique than the prince of the academy, the woman fixed her gaze with a small dangerous glint in her eyes. You are definitely much hotter than Kiba. Finally, Aika bowed her shoulders and turned around. It's a shame you're ashamed to show what you have in store. What happens? Matsuda wondered, giving him a dirty. Look, I don't know, but class is about to start. Motohama adjusted her glasses with a perverted smile on her face. I heard that the new teacher is extremely pretty. New teacher. Issei sat on her bench, turning around to hear an explanation from Matsuda. The bald man was about to answer him, but a huge blush along with a small drop of blood on his nose left him speechless. Silencio. Issei couldn't help but widen his eyes in shock. That voice. The brunette quickly turned around, watching in great astonishment as Tiamat was in front of his students. A small smile appeared on the dragon's face, which seemed to be directed solely at Issei. My name is Tiamat Freeze, and I will be your new chemistry teacher. Tiamat looked at all of her students with the typical serious expression on her face. Does anyone have a question? Wait a sec. Issei couldn't help but widen his eyes again. The teacher who will live in my house from today, is she? Matsuda raised his hand. I heard you're an exchange teacher. So, are you staying at the academy residences, or somewhere else? I'm living in Issei's house. She answered the dragon simply. All eyes fell on Issei, making the brunette quite nervous. Issei. Damn it. Matsuda started emanating fire from his eyes. Silence. Tiamat's cold gaze made Matsuda cringe in less than a second. I'm sorry, she declared herself, with a rather pale face. To start class, Tiamat fixed her gaze on Issei and pointed at him with the ruler. Hyodo Issei. The chestnut quickly stood up after hearing his name. What happens when CO2 goes into a solid state? Issei blinked in slight surprise at the question. When carbon dioxide goes into a solid state, it turns into ice, professor. That's right. Tiamat smiled at him. But it's not just ice, it's dry ice. It differs from normal ice, because it doesn't leave a residue of moisture, since it's made up of a gaseous component. Tiamat moved closer, and gave a small insulating box a large insulating box with his ruler. We will work with the same thing today. Taking advantage of the fact that today is very cold, each one will take a small part of the ice and make a sculpture. I brought the materials they needed. Tiamat fixed his gaze on all his students with great seriousness. Understood. Yeah. They all responded quickly. Line jump. Everyone had already taken their gloves and different tools to work with the ice. As expected, Art did not get along very well with all students. The only one who hadn't started was Issei. For some reason, her mind was completely blank. What's wrong, Issei? Tiamat settled next to him, looking at him carefully. I can't think of anything. The brown-haired man answered, rubbing his hair desperately. I am not asking you to create contemporary art. Tiamat explained with a small smile. Just think of something you like. Tiamat continued on her way, not realizing that Issei was watching her for a few seconds. Hmm. Issei squeezed his eyes shut and began to think. Something I like, something I like. A lot of images came to his head from the many erotic movies he watched together with his friends. I also imagine Matsuda and Motohama, since they were best friends with him and he really liked them. In this way, hundreds of other memories flashed through his head. They went on and on, until, suddenly, he frowned slightly as he saw long light blue hair in his thoughts. Afterwards, it was beautiful eyes of the same color, along with a radiant smile from her master. Finally, he remembered what he looked like while he was training, with that sweat sticking to his body. 
A small blush came to her face as she continued to remember her moments with her with a smile. Without a doubt, he liked her, he liked her a lot. Wow, Issei. Matsuda's scream made Issei snap out of his thoughts. It's a perfect portrait. Hey. Issei looked down at her, seeing that a training Tiamat ice figure was in front of him. Uh, quickly, everyone crowded around him to stare in amazement at the perfectly crafted ice figure. Look, even her clothing is made to perfection. You're amazing. What's all this fuss about? Tiamat quickly stepped forward and made everyone sit in their respective seats. He was visibly surprised when he saw his figure. It's me. The dragon took it delicately with her hands, looking at her carefully. Every detail is perfect. Honestly, I'm impressed. Tiamat gave him a small smile, which denoted the cute little fangs of hers. What did you base it on? Well, Issei rubbed at his hair with a smile. You told me to think of something I liked. Tiamat blinked in surprise, unable to stop a slight blush from appearing on her face at the answer. Line jump. I'm not going to babysit, Azazel. Penemu gave her a dirty look, while she crossed her legs on the couch. Come on, it's not a babysitting job. Azazel would put a tray with three drinks on the table. Besides, Azazel grabbed a glass, giving the woman a sly look. This boy is very special. Perhaps he is the apprentice you have been looking for for the last thousand years. Penemu grabbed a glass, fixing her gaze on Azazel's face with great seriousness. I will not be sure. The beautiful woman drank the drink delicately. But, I plan to give it a try. I like how it sounds. Azazel laughed. But try not to kill him in the process, or we'd be in a lot of trouble. The doorbell rang, causing a huge smile to shoot across Azazel's face. He quickly got up from his seat and looked towards the entrance. Come in, it's open. Excuse me. Issei opened the door, bowing his head in greeting. Azazel narrowed his eyes with a strange look on his face. Close the door. Issei turned around to close the door, only to hear a strange sound. His eyes widened wildly as feathers blacker than night shot out in various directions. The brunette didn't hesitate for a second, and he turned around instantly, his eyes widening in shock at what he was seeing. As you already know, my name is Azazel. Azazel spread his many pairs of wings with a smile, as did Penemu who was still sitting. I am the leader of the fallen angels. And this is Penemu, my secretary, Akadri. End of chapter. Chapter 19. The training period begins. Trial period. As you already know, my name is Azazel. Azazel spread his many pairs of wings with a smile, as did Penemu who was still sitting. I am the leader of the fallen angels. And this is Penemu. My secretary, Akadri. Issei was rendered speechless. She didn't know how to respond to what she was witnessing. But, it was more than obvious that he was intimidated. The brown-haired man couldn't help but take a step back, taking the handle, at the same time that he materialized his gauntlet. Calm down, brat. Azazel tried to calm him down, putting his hands in his pockets. We have no intention of harming you. Why is the leader of the fallen angels here? Issei questioned him stating that he still hadn't calmed down one bit. Who do you think sent the white dragon emperor to save you? Hearing this, Issei couldn't help but blink in surprise. I'm sorry I didn't realize earlier what Kokobiel was up to, otherwise he would have stopped it from the start. The leader of the fallen apologized, taking a glass to offer it to him. I know you still don't trust us. But don't you think we would have killed you by now, if that's what we were after? Azazel narrowed his eyes with a very sly look. After all, you are well aware of the power a cadre possesses. Didrag. Issei thought, looking at the glass with great seriousness. Let's hear it. We don't lose anything. The dragon declared seriously, feeling no hostility from Penemu or Azazel. After a second, Issei finally grabbed the glass. I hear you. A big smile appeared on Azazel's face after hearing her answer. Line jump. Sirzex did I invite you to come here? Issei couldn't help but stare at him in amazement. Why would the president's brother call you? She couldn't help but think. That's how it is. Azazel nodded, leaning back in the front chair, next to Penemu. At first, I didn't see the interest in accepting his offer. But, when he told me that you were here, the idea of coming became irresistible to me. I, Issei pointed to himself with a raised eyebrow. Azazel is a specialist in sacred gears. He even has a certain obsession with them. 
Penemu explained, finishing her drink. He's fascinated by how it works, and that's why he couldn't help but turn down the offer when he found out that one of the 13 Longinus were here. Longinus, Issei thought. That name sounds familiar to me. His thoughts were quickly abandoned, when Issei returned to what Penemu had mentioned to him. Wait, are you two sacred gear specialists? I never said that I was. Penemu corrected him, looking at him with his stoic expression. But yes, being his secretary, his jobs always go through me, although I shouldn't always. She concluded, giving Azazel a glare, who was ignored by the leader of the fallen. Penemu abandoned her disapproving gaze, fixing her gaze on Issei with some curiosity. Why you ask? Issei couldn't help but get serious after the question. There will be a time when your body can't improve any further, and you'll be stuck. When that time comes, you'll need to focus on the secrets of the sacred gear to keep moving forward, and only then will you become stronger. At that moment, but the ideal would be that in one instance of your career you train both areas at the same time to be able to exploit your potential more quickly. Diedrag's words came back to his mind. That does not matter. Azazel clarified, causing both of them to look at him. I guess what you really want to know is the other reason I came here. Azazel got up from the chair, placing her hand on his chin. Oh am I wrong? Issei answered him with his very attentive look in search of an answer. For starters, Sears X doesn't know that we've been seeing each other all these days, although I don't think he really cares about that either. The fallen angel declared looking away, what really matters is that your sister has no idea I'm here. And what does the president have to do with this? Issei asked, raising an eyebrow. All. Oh. Azazel fixed his gaze on Issei, causing the brunette to be surprised at the answer. Apparently, he wants to prepare Rias and his entourage for the upcoming raiding game. But he had already promised to help another family, so he sought me out. Will you train us? Issei widened his eyes at finding the answer. Azazel bowed his shoulders with a smile. I must say that Kokobiel made things a lot easier by destroying Kuo Academy, because they can focus on training for a month and a half without any worries. Issei lowered his gaze, beginning to tie all the threads together. That's why they didn't fix the building right away, the brunette thought aloud. You can figure things out pretty quickly when you put your mind to it, huh? Azazel commented with some grace when he saw how Issei gave him a bad look after her words. Well, Azazel got up from his seat. That's all for today, hey. Issei couldn't help but blink in slight surprise. Already, I called you here a day before the meeting to see if you had any questions about Valley, but I see that you don't. Azazel stated simply, making Issei a bit serious. I've already come across him before. I suppose there's nothing I want to know about him. The brown-haired man answered, receiving a curious look from the fallen angel. Line jump. Mr. and Mrs. Hyodo were looking in slight surprise as Tiamat had been engaging in a rather nice conversation with Issei throughout dinner, something that I miss them dearly. Thanks for the food, she exclaimed the brunette, getting up from the table, along with her now teacher. They both went to the second floor, causing the parents to look at each other. I never would have imagined that the teacher was the same young woman who visited Issei the other day. Commented her mother. It's true. The father answered. But I'm glad it's her, because this way we won't have problems with Issei. You know what kind of problems I mean. Mrs. Hyodo fixed her gaze on her husband. Hey. Don't you think? Of course not. The man laughed. We're talking about our son. Do you seriously think he could have some sort of intimate relationship with a woman of that caliber? The father finished his drink, giving a contented sigh. She must have hundreds of suitors who are worth it. You know, businessmen, engineers, technicians, computer scientists, military. The man waved his hand, indicating that the list went on and on. People who already have their lives figured out. Not some 17-year-old brat who has serious social issues, especially with the opposite gender. Leaving out the fact that he's a minor, of course. The father concluded giving his point of view. Mrs. Hyodo just smiled at what her husband mentioned. She thought exactly the same as him. Neither of them thought about what was happening in Issei's room right now. Tiamat caught Issei's cheeks with both of her hands. I don't like that at all. He declared the dragon with a very concerned look on her face. You won't see any trouble. Issei smiled silly when he saw how Tiamat took care of him so much. 
We've been discussing it with Diedrake, and they don't seem like they're dangerous guys. Besides, they could have hurt me much sooner if they wanted to. Tiamat fixed her gaze on Issei's face, showing him all the internal conflicts she had at the moment. Hey, Issei couldn't help but be surprised, when Tiamat placed his forehead against Issei's with great affection. Take care. Tiamat's worried tone intensified. Take care, please. Tiamat slightly separated her face from him, denoting how his beautiful pure blue eyes shone with great concern. If you care so much, you can see the training with your own eyes. Issei smiled at him, making Tiamat look at him closely. That way, you won't be so worried. I take the word. The dragon answered quickly, outlining a small smile that denoted her cute little fangs. Issei grabbed the dragon's hand that was still on his cheek, chuckling slightly. I think you should start trusting others a little more. I know what they did to your kind, but everyone deserves a second chance, don't you think? Issei couldn't help but widen his eyes as Tiamat squeezed his cheeks even harder. Do you really think they are good people? The dragon asked with great seriousness. Hmm, yes, of course. She answered the chestnut with complete naturalness and security. Ah my eyes, they are very good people. That's what your eyes see. Issei blinked in astonishment as Tiamat's eyes glowed with intensity. But are your eyes able to distinguish reality? Tiamat broke away from him, sitting up on the bed. Don't you think you should even give them a chance? Issei asked, rubbing his cheek nervously. I'll only give someone a chance if I think they really deserve it. Tiamat fixed his gaze on Issei, giving him a small smile. You for example. Issei could only smile at her last words, remembering how their relationship had started with her wanting to kill him, and in fact, she almost did. Besides, Tiamat couldn't help but lower her gaze with a bit of pain, making Issei jump. It's not just that I can't trust them. Since I was completely blinded by anger back then, I let many companions and friends who truly cared for me die. Finally, the only one left alive was Tannen, and still not even I haven't even visited him. Make new relationships. Tiamat couldn't help but widen her eyes at the brunette's words. You know, you can make some friends at the academy. Take advantage of the fact that now you're starting over. I'll support you in everything you need. Tiamat couldn't help but clasp her hands nervously. But, I'm not good with that kind of thing. Issei laughed, making Tiamat look at him with a small blush of embarrassment on his face. What is so funny? Issei leaned against the door, crossing his arms with a big toothy grin. It's a joke. Tiamat could not help but blink in confusion. That, Issei's face became serious from one second to the next. Tiamat, you are a wonderful woman. After hearing her words, the dragon couldn't help lowering her head so that Issei wouldn't see her big blush. I'm sure all the people would be as happy as I am to have you so close. Tiamat's hands would clench for a second. It's more. I'm sure you could find the love you want. Tiamat's hands tightened even more after her words, although this time it was not because she felt very good, but quite the opposite. With how beautiful you are, you could select a man who really loved you, and... I don't want another man. Tiamat's outburst, made Issei blink in great surprise. I had already decided, I don't want to have a love relationship again. She concluded herself, giving him a smile. That's how it is. The only man who had a chance with her was Issei. She didn't want another man, other than Issei. I only wanted Issei. And you, would you like to start a love relationship? Tiamat returned the question, making the brunette look surprised. Would you die for me? At that moment, Issei felt like a complete idiot for saying all those things to Tiamat without taking her feelings into account. Especially since dragons feel ten times more than humans. If you feel sadness, you feel it ten times more. And as a bearer of Diedrake, those characteristics became part of his body. So, with Tiamat's question, he now knew exactly what she had felt in those moments. And good. Tiamat raised an eyebrow, waiting for the answer. I. Issei's mind started to get fuzzy. Tiamat was the first thing that crossed her mind, outlining the huge and beautiful smile that she saw on her face for the first time. When they met, when he decided to stay with her. You are unbelievably stupid, boring and hopeless. Someone who is truly disgusting, do you really think any woman would be interested in you? I pity you. Rainer's words coupled with that memory, causing Issei to recall his misery. Tiamat couldn't help but be surprised by what she was seeing. 
It didn't take him a second to feel very guilty. Hey. Issei widened her eyes as the tears fell from her face without her consent, beginning to wipe them away as quickly as possible so Tiamat wouldn't see them, but it was too late. Her face quickly twisted into a very damaged expression, letting herself be carried away by what she was feeling in her heart. Those last words from Rainer had been the ones that had sentenced him completely, and they didn't need to remind him of something so sad. Tiamat rose and came to him in an instant. Issei couldn't help but widen his eyes as he felt how his dragon's lips pressed his forehead. Lovingly, his sadness was quickly transformed into a great fascination for what Tiamat was doing, and his eyes reflected it very clearly. After a few seconds, Tiamat finally stopped kissing his forehead, lowering her gaze to look at him intently. I didn't want to remind you of something so sad, Tiamat's gaze softened greatly. Can you forgive me? Issei could only smile at her words. Of course. The brunette positioned her face between her breasts, feeling absolute comfort. Tiamat wiped away the last tears that fell from his face with her hand, making the brunette smile even more. We'd better each go to sleep. Tomorrow will be a very tiring day, don't you think? Not being able to speak between her breasts, Issei just nodded, making his dragon place her hand on top of her hair, caressing it lovingly. Line jump. Issei had been lying down for a while now, his eyes were wide, indicating that he couldn't sleep at all. Issei couldn't help but frown as he felt a strange pressure on his chest. A pressure that never went away since the talk with Tiamat, although the dragon managed to calm him down a bit in those moments. Didrag, are you still awake? Issei called out to her partner causing a downcast look to decorate her face. I'm here, partner. Diedrag stated seriously, knowing what his friend was feeling. Issei put his hand to his chest, making his look sad. Can you tell me what's happening to me? She asked her, her voice sounding rather down, as if he was suffering from a major depression. You have to contain those bad thoughts, partner. The dragon stated with slight concern. You're going through a trauma. But, having your emotions so heightened, having to deal with one trauma, it's like having to deal with ten traumas at once. I already knew that from the beginning. Diedreg couldn't help but be surprised at his answer. What I want to know is why this pain has intensified so much lately, when I think of Tiamat. Issei squeezed her chest tightly, feeling that tears were about to come out. She hasn't done anything wrong to me. Actually, quite the opposite. She's the best. She's wonderful. She's someone beautiful. The first tears began to flow from the chestnut's eyes. Then why? Issei's broken voice made Diedreg feel sorry for her bearer. Why every time I think of all the beautiful moments I had with her, does this pain intensify? Issei placed his hand over her eyes so as not to see himself in such a sorry state. That's an answer you have to find on your own, Issei. The fact that Diedreg called him by his name, made Issei know that he was serious, so he clenched his fist tightly. I'll find her, Issei answered, with a much more recovered tone of voice. Diedreg just sighed internally, unable to help but worry about his partner. I thought this could end this way, Diedreg thought seriously. At first I was afraid that Tiamat would become obsessed with him. But, now, I just feel sorry for both of them. Line jump. Wake up, wake up, please. The alarm clock was heard throughout Issei's room, making the brown-haired man yawn. I if you don't wake up, I all okay k kiss you. Issei couldn't help but be surprised when a hand with very creamy and refined skin rose from the sheets, turning off the alarm clock with his hand. The chestnut color slightly removed the sheets, causing Tiamat's light blue hair to be easily dazzled, spreading all over the bed, something that was already becoming a habit. At what point? Issei couldn't help wondering, although he brushed it off as Tiamat hugged him tightly at the same time that a small pleased smile appeared on his face as he leaned heavily on his chest. Did you turn off the alarm clock while you were asleep? Issei thought, fixing the disheveled hair of the dragon, to see that. Her eyes were closed, releasing a nice image of inner peace. Finally, Issei carefully got out of bed, making sure not to wake the beautiful woman. A small smile appeared on her chestnut face when he finished tucking her in and handed her a small pillow as the dragon hugged him instantly and turned around, intensifying her smile a little more. It's the first time I've seen her smile when she sleeps, Issei thought, looking at her with great attention as she put on her clothes. I wonder what she's dreaming. Issei gave her one last look before leaving, 
to then close his door with great silence. Tiamat shifted on the bed again, then tightened her embrace on the small cushion even more. His cheeks slowly turned pink, while his smile seemed to intensify even more. To end, she uttered a single word with impressive tenderness and affection. Issei. Line jump. Where are the others? Issei looked in various directions, seeing that only he and Rias were outside the old academy building. Kiba is having some trouble, while the others are helping Xenobia control her demonic corruption. She answered Rias matter-of-factly, ignoring the fact that Issei looked at her with wide eyes. Quote dot dot dot. Xenobia turned into a devil. Issei asked in complete disbelief. Correct. Rias answered again as if it was something completely natural. She asked me when we met yesterday. He clarified himself, looking at his nails carefully. But, she always said that demonic corruption disgusted her. Issei looked up from her a bit doubtfully. It's true. When we met, she had mentioned that the demonic corruption had disappeared, because she met you. You know, for the generation that came after the Great War, and all that stuff, the redhead commented as if it was nothing, causing Issei to look at her with wide eyes. Suddenly, a somewhat suspicious and disapproving look graced Issei's face. You lied to him. That. Rias finally dropped that casual tone, and stopped looking at the perfection of his nails to look at his face. I didn't lie to her. She never asked me in the first place. But. She did believe it. Issei narrowed his eyes at her in great suspicion. You could have at least told her before transforming her. Why are you so concerned? Rias crossed her arms, unable to help but raise an eyebrow. You should be glad your mistress has a strong new knight in her ranks. A small smile spread on Rias's face. Besides, you shouldn't worry. Akino, Asia, and Kaneko will make sure that she manages to control the internal corruption. Issei crossed his arms, lowering his gaze. I get your point. The brunette remembered Asia's drastic change after becoming a devil. But, they'll never be the same, he whispered under his breath, feeling bad for Xenobia. Rias just looked at him in confusion, since she hadn't heard his last words. Oh. 4. Kiba walked out of the old building, with two big pillows on his butt, while he walked in a strange way. That made the awkward moment between Issei and Rias break completely, since the blonde took all the attention of the brown-haired man. Issei couldn't help but look at Rias with a raised eyebrow, while pointing at the blonde. What happened? It was the punishment for disobeying my orders. Rias replied with a small innocent smile. The punishment was to slap him on the butt with the addition of using magic power. Also, Asia is prohibited from healing him for three days. Issei couldn't help but look at Kiba with wide eyes, only to start giggling like an idiot, pointing at the pillows on his butt. Issei, please don't be so cruel, Kiba stated, leaning against the wall with much difficulty, a nervous smile decorating his face. Ha 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 ha. Issei held his stomach hard, unable to stop pointing at it. Not even being. Prince Charming saved you from this. Issei exclaimed starting to cry with laughter. President, how many slaps were there? She asked herself, wiping away her tears, unable to stop laughing. There were about a thousand in total. He answered the redhead with complete confidence and innocence. Ha 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 wait, a thousand. Issei yelled, his eyes seemed to be about to pop out of his sockets. Don't you think you exaggerated a bit? That way, I make sure that no one strays, and everyone fulfills their duties. Rias answered, with a certain seriousness in his words. I guess you're right. Issei rubbed his hair, giving off a strange look. Still, that's too much. Especially, considering the reason why Kiba left the president. In fact, I think he would have done the same. He couldn't help but think, feeling a little sorry for the blonde. Hello. They all looked ahead, seeing how a subject unknown to all appeared. For everyone, except for Issei. Hum, hello. Rias couldn't help but comment with some uncertainty upon seeing the man who appeared to be slightly older than his brother. I hope you're prepared for what's to come, Bratz. Azazel's gaze sharpened, making Kiba and Rias look at him with some suspicion. Who are you? Rias asked, taking a step forward, giving him a menacing and piercing glare. Noticing this, a somewhat Machiavellian smile appeared on Azazel's face, causing a suffocating black aura to emanate from his body. Your look doesn't scare me, brat. Rias couldn't help but take a step back with wide eyes, while Kiba instantly materialized his sword. 
The other members of the entourage came out of the old building, also prepared for battle. Even so, everyone was puzzled as the subject began to laugh frantically, his extremely powerful aura then disappearing. Without a doubt, his reaction was as funny as I expected. Azazel narrowed his eyes with a half-smile on his face. How about inviting me in? After all, I am a guest of Mao himself. He commented himself, teasing a bit with the last two words from him. Line jump. I do not accept it. Rias slammed her hands on his legs, giving Azazel a glare. My brother should have enough time to train us. He concluded, seeing how Azazel had usurped his seat. If you don't believe me, you can call him. Azazel commented, playing with the pencils. He is very busy, training the other heiresses group. Rias blinked in surprise at the aforementioned. You mean Sona? Well, Azazel got up from the seat, opting for a bored look. If it bothers you that much about a fallen angel supervising your training, I guess I'll go. Azazel took several steps, until he was about to leave. A sly smile graced his face as he took the doorknob. I wonder how much the Citri family will become stronger with the training of the Mao himself, I would be very happy to see it with my own eyes. He commented, making Rias's eyes twitch. Wait. Rias jumped up from her seat. Azazel turned his face, outlining a small mocking smile. Do you have something to tell me, you proud brat? Rias trembled slightly at his words, but she didn't let it bother her. Teach us, please. A huge smile spread on Azazel's face after his words. Line jump. Shall we train in hell? Issei had his face glued to the subway train window, trying to distinguish something from the place, but due to her great speed, it was impossible to distinguish anything. What better place to train than a place where you can feel at home? Azazel asked, leaning back on his seat very calmly. And, a mysterious smile appeared on the face of his fallen. Here is the first stop. They all couldn't help but look at him with a raised eyebrow since they were on the outskirts of the main city, according to them. That, Rias was the first to ask, only to get a huge surprise when a magic circle absorbed almost all the members. Oh, they all screamed in fright, disappearing from the place. That, Issei quickly turned around, seeing that everyone had disappeared, except Azazel. Well, Issei, Azazel fixed his gaze on the brunette, giving him a small smile. To be honest, I would have loved to supervise your training. But I think it's best if you train with someone stronger than me, and have them focus solely on your training. A magic circle appeared at Azazel's feet, doing a little military salute before disappearing. Good luck with them too. See you soon. What the hell? Issei watched with a wooden face as Azazel had left him alone, since he had no idea when or how to get off. Wait, he said there were two, an intrigued look covered Issei's face. Who are those two? It didn't take long for Issei's question to get an answer, as the door that connected to the other carriage opened, causing the brunette to widen his eyes in great astonishment. You, Issei commented, fixing his gaze on the hooded woman who was almost two meters tall. We'll meet again, kid, Penemu said, fixing her gaze on his potential student with his typical stoic expression. Line jump. I've already started the training. I've decided that Rias will focus on her control over the power of destruction. While Akino, let's say I try to force her to awaken her true power, making her have no repulsion to use her falling power. Kiba she's learning to control her balance breaker with Xenobia, making them both help each other. Asia is in charge of healing injured animals all the time, to improve her effectiveness and speed when it comes to healing in the middle of battle. Azazel commented to Sirzex, seeing that the supreme demon seemed to be expecting someone else. As for Issei, I left him in the hands of Tannen and Penemu. They are heading to the dragon's territory right now, so he will be separated from the others for now. Sirzex couldn't help but bag his eyes a little. With Tannen, how did you manage to convince him? The supreme demon asked with great intrigue. After all, he doesn't allow anyone to enter his territory because of what happened a thousand years ago. I just had to tell him that Issei was the bearer of Diedrake. Azazel replied simply, Remember that the two of you were very close in the past, and you must surely be happy to see someone who has at least a little bit of dragon in him. I see. Sirzex placed both hands on his face, looking at him with great seriousness. During training, Issei won't be able to visit Rias or vice versa. I would prefer that you not come into contact with your comrades for a while. 
Azazel explained seriously. Don't take this the wrong way, but I think joining them would only distract him from his goal. And believe me, he'll need as much concentration as possible to face the training. I remind you that we're talking about Penemu, he concluded, narrowing his eyes with still more seriousness. It's true. Sirzex closed his eyes, giving an internal sigh. He planned to make Rias and Issei get closer during this month and a half, but he didn't count that Azazel would have a plan like that. He thought to himself with a bit of annoyance. Well, it doesn't matter. If he can become much stronger than he thought, this will end up benefiting us. Rias's can wait, he concluded, fixing his gaze on the window of his room. Well, I'd better go. Azazel got up from his seat, giving him a small smile. I'll be called lazy if I don't supervise his training for more than eight hours. Sirzex just nodded with a smile. Line jump. The wind strongly crossed Issei's hair, while he focused completely around, seeing a forest that seemed to have no end, plus a huge, completely deserted mountain behind him. Where I am, Issei had a stick face at what she was witnessing. It was not expected that her accommodation would be in such a complicated place. This certainly brought back some very nice memories with a certain dragon. Her goofy expression quickly disappeared, as Penemu stepped forward, unsheathing her sword that was deep black in color. She removed the hood of her huge black robe, fixing her gaze on Issei. Before I train you, I want to see if you really are what I'm looking for. Penemu fixed her piercing crimson red eyes on Issei, causing the chatter to take a step back unconsciously. What are you looking for? Issei asked, raising both eyebrows. Wait a minute, why are we going to fight? Issei quickly waved his hands in defense, seeing that Penemu seemed to be getting too serious, despite it being just training. His look said it. If you force me to say that one of your attacks could do me even a little damage, you pass. Penemu narrowed her eyes, gripping his sword tightly. Otherwise, you fail. An attack that hurts you. Issei raised an eyebrow. Are you crazy? Penemu placed a hand on her waist, then raised an eyebrow. Does that mean you can't even scratch me? That, Issei's disregarded gaze changed completely, frowning slightly. An almost indistinguishable smile appeared on Penemu's face, seeing that the brunette had easily fallen for her provocation. I'm sorry, but I can't let anyone call me weak, Issei declared, causing her gauntlet to materialize. Ah in turn, a proud smile appeared on Diedrag's face after her comment. Penemu reaffirmed her grip on her sword, narrowing her eyes a little. That's the answer I was waiting for. One of the fallen's legs came forward and his other hand fixed on the metal part of the sword, taking a samurai stance that intimidated Issei a bit. Her long hair as black as darkness itself along with its purple highlights began to wave in the wind, giving the woman a rather radiant and magnificent appearance, if you omitted the fact that she seemed to want to kill you. So, let's get started. End of chapter.